there. Welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. If you are brand new to my channel, yay, you found me finally. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and if you're a returning subscriber, yay, thank you so much for coming back. I truly appreciate your support. So as my subscribers know, my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can decide whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a particular film. So the movie I'm reviewing today is called Paging Mr. Darcy. This romantic comedy by Hallmark is now streaming on the Peacock channel. It's rated TVG and is an hour and 30 minutes long. My overall movie review mom grade is a B. I actually really got a kick out of this movie. First, I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell to explain why I gave it the grade that I did. I'll point out tips for parents, themes worth talking about, things I liked, things I didn't like, interesting lines, funny lines if there are any, and recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that I think you might also like or maybe even like better than this one. All right, so does that sound like a good plan? Let's dive in. In a nutshell, welcome to Loveuary, Hallmark's celebration of romance in February this year. Paging Mr. Darcy is their first flick to kick off the month. The story's description by the Hallmark Studio sounds just like one of a Jane Austen movie, which is a love of Jane Austen's novels helps two people overcome their pride and admit to their belief in love. The sugary sweet romance was directed by Peter Wellington. Writing credits go to Raina Hardy. So let me give you some quick tips for parents. I think kids are gonna be really bored unless they're already Jane Austen fans. There is kissing, there is a little bit of bullying, but otherwise the movie is very family friendly and clean. Some of the themes that are illustrated in the movie well are anxiety, confidence, being willing to try new things, pride, and of course, being willing and open to love. So there are plenty of things that I really liked about the movie. First of all, the leading couple is played beautifully by Mallory Jansen and Will Kemp. I loved the scene with the afternoon English tea. Have you ever been to one of those? When I taught classes at the famous Le Cordon Bleu Culinary College, I met an incredible pastry chef whose last name in real life is Sweetster, Chef Sweetster. Amazing, right? So when the college closed, so sad, she decided to open up her own tea house room in Las Vegas. And it is absolutely fantastic, winning her well-deserved praise and several awards. So if you are ever in Las Vegas, definitely check out Queen of Hearts tea room and you can see some of her scrumptious food in pictures and cute decor on her website queenofheartsvegas.com so check that out and tell her i said hi she's amazing there are a lot of comparisons between the characters in this movie obviously and those in jane austen's books fans will definitely see those and get a kick out of them i think we catch a glimpse of a movie playing on TV in one of the scenes. Now, the movie that it shows was premiered in 2018, and it's called Marrying Mr. Darcy. I know that these Jane conferences actually happen, and I think it would be really fun to attend one someday. Comment down below if you've gone to one of these things. I even met a couple of women. Uh, I was traveling somewhere on a bus. Uh, out of the country and it was a mother and her daughter sitting behind me so we started chit-chatting and I learned that they travel around the world together and I said oh what's your next trip and they said oh, we're gonna go to England and do a Jane Austen conference tour and I was like that's amazing and I wanted to go but I couldn't but I will someday because I just think it's so funny I mean I'm not a huge fan like some of these people but I definitely admire the literature and that's what the main character is all about, is the literature of Jane Austen, not necessarily the romance. In fact, she kind of rejects all of the romance and the dancing and all of that a bit. We see the characters learn and grow, just like in Jane Austen's books. 
Now, there were a few things that I didn't like or just thought could have been done differently or better. For example, Hallmark is certainly aware that their target audience also loves Jane Austen. So this kind of a tribute is sure to make fans happy, right? Well, I think the biggest problem about this movie is that the team that created it uh, seemed to be too much in a hurry to thoroughly research what it is about Jane Austen's books that people love so much and then incorporate those things into the film. So many of the details could have absolutely delighted viewers. Instead, true Janeites might be a little bit frustrated. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they didn't do any research because there are some details that I enjoyed, but I think they really could have dug a little deeper just to really satisfy that in the audience's mind and heart. Why are the female protagonists in Hallmark movies always so judgy, stubborn, unfun, and annoying? Like, that's kind of a trope of Hallmark movies, isn't it? One of the characters, the leading man, Mr. Lee, calls the leading lady a stuffed shirt. And she is. And it kind of makes men seem shallow that they would continue to pursue such a cranky, unpleasant woman simply because she's pretty, right? I mean, they don't even know anything about her personality other than she's not pleasant, you know? And I've always thought, well, then find somebody else. There are plenty of fish in the sea. I thought it was really cute and funny when we see a teary-eyed young woman at the conference being offered a little uh, container of crawling and prejudice ice cream, as well as Mansfield chunk. And I thought, okay, there we go. And it was meant to console her broken heart. So I thought that that was cute and very classic and cliched, but cute. So many of the scenes are just ridiculous. For example, how can the character, this main protagonist, be a Jane Austen expert without knowing what some of the ballroom dances are or not liking the dresses or not, you know, really appreciating the romance and the fun of all of that, especially at the conferences? You know, yes, the literature is great, but that was part of why people love to gather in these conferences. Anyway, I just thought that that was silly. So it would have been fun to see more elaborate costumes. And instead we see very basic dresses. I definitely see the double meaning of the title of the movie, but no one uses pagers anymore. I, you know, in case you didn't catch that paging Mr. Darcy, you know, paging through the book looking for Mr. Darcy, paging him on a pager. We don't really see a pager in the movie. And so I suppose it's just referring to the pages in the book. But it would have been cute if this movie came out, you know, back in the 80s when people did use pagers. So whenever I watch movies, I take notes, of course, and then I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you. So you can get a taste for the dialogue and the script writing quality. You can see all of them on my written review at moviereviewmom.com, but I'll share some of them with you right now. So there's a girl who just went, went through a breakup and she's heartbroken and she's crying. And of course, everybody stares. So the sister of the protagonist is the one who says this line. She's played by Lillian Doucet Rocher. Hopefully I pronounced her name correctly. And so she notices everybody staring. She's like, what do they care? And then Eloise Cavendish, who is the protagonist, played by Mallory Jansen, says, well, a pretty girl in tears is always a subject of interest, you know, just like in the Jane Austen novels. <laughs> and then another line that Mallory Jansen's character says about a guy is, I hate to disappoint you, but you're growing on me. And then Will Kemp, who is the man that she's starting to get used to, says, that sounds suspiciously like fun when she suggests that they do something. And then there are several lines where different characters, but mostly this one character played by J.D. Leslie kind of rips on men in an effort to elevate women. And she says, women have to go above and beyond to get what they want. Now, that's true. I'm not criticizing that. Um, and it definitely folds into the movie Barbie, where we get several comments and a very long speech by America Ferreira about that fact, right? So there's a little bit of feminism a few times spoken by this one professor who is constantly like, oh, you know, it's so hard to be a woman. Now there are several conversations about this breakup 
And uh, so the sister says to her sister, I don't want to be put up with Eloise. I want to be loved. And so like in Jane Austen books, there is a great expression of love um, that is requested and, and it doesn't happen. And then uh, other big moments happen. And, you know, it makes me think about when I first got married and my husband was um, really great at these big acts of showing how much he loved me. But they would only happen once or twice a year, you know, Valentine's Day, my birthday or anniversary, something like that. And it was great. Don't get me wrong. But one day I was just feeling, you know, having a pity party, um, wondering where's the romance. <laughs> and so I talked to my husband and I said, I think I just need more frequent, smaller doses of expression of love. <laughs> and he thought about that for a minute. And he said, you know, it's kind of like a like a baseball game, right? The the grand slam hits are exciting and wonderful and great, but it's those small base hits that really win the game. And I was like, yes. And in fact, because of his way of putting that, I ended up writing a book years later with one of my sons about dating and marriage called Base Hits and Home Run Relationships. So definitely check it out. It's on Amazon and Always check out my Instagram feed because I offer it for free every now and then on Amazon. Anyway, you can find me as Movie Review Mom on Instagram, but you can also find me as Trina Boyce, which is my name, which is where I have all of my books, my online courses, my products, and my shenanigans. All right, back to the movie. So a few other interesting lines are, are spoken by, again, the sister, and she says, love is putting yourself out there, risking it all. And that absolutely has to do with making a fool of yourself in front of public, telling the world how much, you know, you love somebody and that kind of thing. Finally, the main character gets it. And she says, fools and heroines are not separate categories. You have to risk being one in order to become the other. And she has a great learning curve where, you know, she just is very serious and a scholar and she doesn't get all involved in the silly romantic nonsense. And a guy who's interested in her says, you know, you can still be a scholar and have fun. And she finally gets it in the end. Not to be a big spoiler there, but you, you knew it was coming, right? I mean, all of the Hallmark movies are very predictable. Now, let me give you some recommendations for some other films that I also really like. The first one is called Unleashing Mr. Darcy. That one came out in 2016. Pride and Prejudice, my favorite one of those, is probably the 1995 version. And I know most people, most Jane Austen fans, have a very strong opinion of which movie they liked the best. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And then I loved the 2020 version of the Jane Austen book, Emma. I'll cue that one up after you finish watching this. Um, I just thought it was so beautifully done. Gorgeous costume design, directing, cinematography, fantastic acting performances. I really loved that one. And then another one that I thought was really cute was really uh, about these conferences and J-Nights and it's called Austin Land. And that was filmed in 2013. All right. Let me know if you are an Austinite or a Janeite uh, and which one is your favorite book? Comment down below and I will catch you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Bye for now.